In this world that we're living in, uh, so many people have gone through ups and downs and ins and outs. We're probably about all out of perfect people. And I'm one of the folks that, that God touched in the worst moments of my life. And from a concrete floor in a solitary confinement cell, he provoked me to trust him. He gave me the faith to choose him. And I need those doubters because I want them to be the very people that can absolutely see the transformation. It was the authentic relationship that came with Jesus Christ in the most unfamiliar place, the inner parts of a prison. And I want them to keep watching because I believe they will see the reflective light of God. We off the grid, 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 grid. We off the grid, grid. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Well, I wanted to play that commercial twice. So, you know. <laughs> good morning. We're going to let them come on in. Give them, uh, everybody, a couple of minutes to come in. How's everybody doing this morning? What a wonderful morning it is. You got up this morning. You started from victory. I got up with this big thing on my head. Well, I look like, a, you know, like I'm trying to grow a horn out that joint. That's all right, though. We're going to put some stuff on in a minute. Right after we get out of here, y'all come on in. I got my shirt. Somebody sent me a shirt that says, everybody, I'm rooting for everybody in Detroit. Yeah, I like that. That's from the hometown. Uh, I'm rooting for everybody. But I'm definitely rooting for those folks that grew up around me and I grew up around, you know, particularly those people uh, who told me to get out there and, 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 and make something of myself. So I, I'm, I'm rooting for everybody who's, falling down and had to get back up. Everybody that's going through a tough time right now, uh, all those people who continue to con con keep on keeping on, uh, I'm rooting for you. I'm rooting for you. And so we are right now letting folks come in. Come on in. Come on in. Um, um, the Lord has something to say this morning. We're going to finish uh, our conversation that we've had over the past uh, few weeks, we missed last week, and you all forgive me. Uh, we had a traveling error. Um, you know, them planes, they, they canceled our flight. They canceled our flight. Um, I know y'all saw it on the news that we were, uh, you know, some of the people who got their flights canceled, that, that, was, that was old Quam. So I was not on the ground to do the Bible study, so we had to cancel it. Um, but that's all right. We back. You back. Um, good morning, Alice Johnson. Good morning, Cassandra. Welcome back. Thank you for that message that you sent me. Uh, we're praying for you and your husband. Um, good morning, Joski Love. Uh, good morning, everybody. I love it. We 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 back. We getting this technology back. I know a couple of people. Uh, they wanted to use Zoom still, but uh, come on over. We gotta we gotta bust into the newness of life, and so. Uh, come on in. We're going to get started in about 60 seconds. We're going to take off. We're going to launch and we ain't going to slow it down. So uh, good morning. I, I, I'm going to have to figure out a way where I can see the Facebook users names. And so we could talk to you. Um, 
Um, somebody told me there's something that you have to do on your end. So, Minkita, welcome back. It was good to hear from you uh, on Tuesday. Good to see you again. Um, come on in, everybody, so we can talk about this word. Uh, this is a little different. On Tuesdays, uh, my wife is here with me, and me and Tisia, we sit here and we talk about real issues. We, we, we use, of course, a foundational scripture because our foundation is Christ. Um, but we talk about real issues that affect and impact real people every single day and how to walk this word out in real life. You know, we all go through something and uh, <laughs> you didn't miss anything last week. We weren't here last week. So uh, it's good to see everybody back. So on Tuesdays at 7 p.m., y'all come and join us. Also, uh, I've been told by all my people, I'm supposed to ask you to click and like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, subscribe. Nobody's here to tell me now. They were coaching me the last last time. But if you can uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel, uh, please do that. Um, can you cook, my man? What's up, good brother? Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, we got some good word. Let's take off in a minute. Um, we always start with the uh, with the a, a scripture, but we always start with the prayer. So let me pray us in. Um, they're coming, they're coming, they're coming, they're coming. All right, they're coming, they're coming. Come on in, come on in. Let's start with a prayer and we're going to take off from there. Let's do it. We're giving our Zoom people a little time to make the transition. <laughs> uh, I was asked to give them about five, six minutes. Uh, some of you all have been on YouTube and you've been on Facebook forever. And there, there are people like us, uh, like me, who haven't done this kind of stuff forever. So we learning as we go. Um, just as soon as one, one person told me, as soon as they got Zoom all the way down, you're going to switch to YouTube. Uh, and I believe that they will recognize that YouTube is, is much easier. And so um, let's get, yeah, okay, and share. Mankita said not just subscribe, but also share. Share the Bible studies. Share our conversations that we have. Uh, on, on Tuesday. I, I think not only it's not about publicity, I just really think, you know, there have been times in my life where I needed a word. I needed somebody that could connect to me. Um, I wish that I could have just had in certain moments somebody to just speak a word in my life. You never know what people are going through. And so when you share this, um, you know, God said his, his word is spirit and truth. Sometimes people are believing a lie. You know, most of the people that end up committing suicide are people who just believed a lie. If they could have just waited to the next day, I was a suicide counselor in the prison. I had to sit there next to the suicide tank and talk to men um, as they were contemplating or had tried to kill themselves. And I would listen to them and everything was saying that they were saying was not the reality outside of their own souls. It was just something going on inside that they had accepted a lie. They believed the lie and they were willing to die to make the lie go away. And so we share this information. We share with one another. We speak to one another. We have kindness with one another because you never know what somebody is going through. So welcome. Okay, Janice is here so we can get started. That's what I'm talking about, Auntie. Welcome. Come on in. I love it. I love it. All of these people coming on. The new system, what's going on, Malik Riley? I hope you feel better, brother. I know you've been laid down for a minute, but, but it's all right. Okay, uh, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this morning. I thank you for the opportunity to just come and speak your word. I thank you for the opportunity to commune with your people. Dear Lord, I just thank you for the opportunity you've given me to be free, not just free from a physical uh, facility, but free in my spirit and my soul, free to speak your word, free to live, free to laugh, free to love. Lord, I just thank you for freedom today. Lord, I ask that you would show up. You're welcome here, Lord. You're welcome in this space. Lord, allow me to decrease so you may increase so that people here today will hear you and not just Kwame. Lord, I know you have a word for somebody because you want them to experience the fullness of yourself. So come now, Lord, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. We've been talking about, and, and, and the rest of everybody else, I, I, I'm not going to be able to get to you because I got to go to work. Um, we've been talking about 
in this Bible study, who is Jesus? Who is Jesus? You know, nobody really has a problem with God. Nobody. Oh, yeah, me and God, we cool. Yeah, God know my heart. Yeah, me and God, cool. You know, I, I, I grew up on Linwood and the Boulevard in Detroit, and I played basketball, Little League. I played on the football teams in PAL, and, and, and it was guys that was doing all kinds of craziness that believe in God. The issue that people have, first of all, we don't know what God you believe in or who's your God, but, but the issue that we have is Jesus. People got an issue with Jesus. They, they, got a, they got a problem with Jesus. And I was one of those people. I, I thought I was a Christian, but eh, I, I couldn't quite get this whole thing. Jesus, God, um, he got up, he, he was on the cross. And, 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 and so it bugged me so much that I had to go to him and I ad, had to ask him for myself, if you are who these people say you are, then reveal it to me. The reason why we're having this study is because of what God did in me and for me, because after I accepted the reality that I saw by his word, it changed my life. And so the reason that I'm having this study is because I'm expecting somebody's life to radically and revolutionarily change. The Bible talks about a lot in due season. In due season, you may reap. In due season, at the appointed time. You know, there were many times I went to church and didn't get anything. There were many times that people tried to minister to me that I didn't get much of anything. And it wasn't the minister's fault. My ears weren't open to hear. I believe that the people who came by here this morning are needing, craving, desiring to hear a word. And then some of you didn't even know you were, you were in that condition. You just stopped by because Kwame said, come on by. But I suggest to you that we have a word for you today. Uh, today we're going to talk about who is Jesus, the great I am. We're going to start with our scripture but before we start with our scripture, I want to go back and just review because somebody just said review. So here we go. We talked about the seven I am statements that are in the Gospel of John where Jesus describes and defines who he is. Those seven statements, I am the bread of life. We talked about that last time, the bread of life. He talked about that, that, uh, that Moses gave you all bread in the wilderness, but my father. He, he gave you the true bread from heaven. That's, that's me. He talked about being sustenance for us. Just like you need physical bread to have sustenance in your body. And the people that he was talking to, they were very familiar with, with bread. And, you know, it, it, I, I said last time, and I hope people weren't offended, Jesus always used words and phrases that people could understand in the natural, but there was greater spiritual revelation. And so he said that he was the bread of life. He was the bread of life. Okay, Derek says, talk into that camera. I got you, Derek. Let me turn this phone off so people be bothered and saying stuff to me. All right. <laughs> and then the second was, I'm the light of the world. I'm the light. I'm, I am the light of the world. I am the door of the sheep. We talked about the sheep folds and the sheep pens that were in Israel on the countryside and how they were made with these rock walls. And during these rock walls, when these rock walls were put together, there was a little doorway because we talked about the condition of the sheep. And the, the shepherd would literally lay in the opening so the sheep couldn't get out and the wolves couldn't get in. He was the door. He protected the sheep. He led the sheep. He, he, he made sure they were okay. He, he thwarted the predators. He killed them. He, he fought them. He got them away from his flock. And so that was what we talked about. Today, we're going to do very quickly the rest of these seven statements. And then we went to Exodus. And Exodus, and I'm going to get this off the screen Exodus, Moses did something that was amazing. He turned aside when he saw a burning bush. He saw the Lord coming from within the bush that was burning and not being consumed. It wasn't being burned up. It was all on fire, but the bush wasn't burning up. And he said, I must turn aside to see this marvelous thing. And when he turned aside, God, the Lord, start talking to him. 
the manifestation of the Lord was right there in the bush. And he started talking to Moses. But what he did, he gave him his assignment for life. He talked to him about his purpose, what he was to do, how he was to do it. But Moses had some questions. That's why I love Moses. Moses said, I'm not going if you're not going with me later on. He said, show me your glory. Moses was somebody that, hey, listen, if you're going to have me do an assignment, Lord, I need to, I need to know a few things. M number one, no, Moses had an idea of who the Lord is because he had intimacy with the Lord. He, he felt like he could ask him a question. He wasn't scared. Moses wasn't scared. As a matter of fact, even when he went to Mount Zion or Mount Sinai and the, and the, and the mountain was on fire. And 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 nobody, all the people, children, and everybody was scared to touch. Moses wasn't. He went on up there, even trembling. He going, he going to the Lord. He's going, he's going, to, he's doing what God said. He was obedient in that fact. But he also asked some questions. He also asked some questions. And one of the questions he asked is, uh, when I go to the children of Israel, who should I say sent me? What's your name? And he said, I am who I am. And he said, they're going to ask me, what is his name? Because at first he said, I'm the God of their fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But he said, yeah, yeah. But they're going to ask me your name. And he said, tell them my name is I am. Tell them I am sent you. And so Jesus in these I am statements, he was proffering that he was that person. And we're going to get more into that today. And the reason why we got to get more into that is because, you know, a lot of people say, where does in the Bible Jesus say he God? That's how people talk when they ask that question. Well, where do you say he go? And 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 I and I and I say, well, you know, if we're looking for they're supposed to say, I I I am God, I could show you a whole lot of things that he says. And this, I believe, John 8, 48 to 49 is the most dramatic inference that we have, the, the exposition of him saying, I am that great I am. And so we're going to talk about that today. But first, before we do that, <laughs> I just want to set the table. I am. I am in the Hebrew was this crazy word, Y-H-W-Y. -Y. It was a word that was made of all consonants and no vowels. And, and so they couldn't speak the word. You may hear um, some uh Israelites or Hebrew Israelites say you don't say that name. It's because they couldn't speak the word. There were no vowels in the word. And so they took the word Adonai. Adonai means a boss, supervisor, head man in charge. That's what Adonai means. They took the vowels out of the word Adonai and, and they put it with the four consonants and they made the word that we've heard of Yahweh. Yahweh, the Hebrew word Yahweh, it translates um, to Jehovah, Jehovah, Jehovah. And we've heard those words. So I am is declaring I am Jehovah. That's that's what it's saying. And we're going to see today that all his audience, the Jewish religious authorities of that day, they understood what Jesus was saying. They didn't have any misunderstanding. It's us. Who have the we have the misunderstanding, and then we go. What does I am mean? It, it, it's not I was. It's I am. So he's eternally present with us. The great I am is eternally present with us. Why, why is that important? Because he wants to communicate in with you in the now. He, he's he's here now. He's eternally present. Now, he, he has no past and he has no future. He has no yesterday and he has no tomorrow. It's always now. He's not bound by the dimensions that he created. He's now. That's why when he gives you a word, um, you're going to come out of this prison in the seventh year. And he tells you in the third year, it's the third year for me. It's the now for him. It's an on time right now word. That means I'm supposed to take it, believe it, stand on it because it's already done. It's already done. I know why we sing these songs, but you got to understand who 
is giving you a word. Why are we saying it's already done? Because I am, he's saying it in the present, in his eternal presence, he's giving you a word. He said, I do have a husband for you. You felt it in your belly. You had a dream about it. You saw it in a vision. You heard the words in your spirit. You know he's on the way, but it don't look like it. Year three, year four. But when he said it, it was in the now. You can trust his word. That's why it's important for us to understand who I am is. He is. Not he was. Not he's going to be. He is. God is. And so before we get to scripture, we need to understand who we talking about. The great I am. Let's just leave it where God is right now before we get to Jesus. Because I want to show you what Jesus called himself. And what happened when he called himself this? Now, let's let's go to it. Um, before Abraham, I believe this, this scripture right here is one of the most definitive scriptures that we've ever heard on this subject. And I have to read it on my paper. I know you can see it good, but it's small on my screen. All right. Yeah, yeah. And, and somebody just said that I am that I am. Now, listen, what does that mean? I am that I, I will be who I will be. I am who I am. I will be who I will be. I am right now. I am declaring who I am myself. You need to get that. I'm who I'm declaring who I am myself. I, I don't need you to declare who I am. I declare who I am myself. Okay, let's go to the scripture. John 8, 48 through 59. John 8, verse 48 through 59. John 8, verse 48 through 59. Let's go to verse 48. The Jews answered him. So this is a conversation that's continuing. Many of you all remember uh, him declaring in John 8, 32, that, 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 that he, um, and you will know the truth and the truth shall set you free or make you free. This is a conversation. They got mad after all of that. Who you think you are? He called them slaves. He told them Abraham uh, was not their father. Their father was the devil. All of this happened before. We're talking about Jesus. So we're not talking about that frail little bitty guy with the long hair. We're talking about a guy who faced down the religious authority and he's talking to them straight up in their face, looking them in their eye and said, your father's not Abraham. Your father's the devil. Now, we, that the frail guy, he couldn't have had this discussion. I want to radically change your idea. Stop looking at them pictures. Yeah, stop looking. Stop looking at them pictures. Yeah, a little lie sometimes made you just disbelieve truth instead of just cutting the lie off. Just cut the lie out, and then you still got truth there. Anyway, the Jews answered him, aren't we right in saying that you are a Samaritan and demon possessed? I am not possessed by demons, said Jesus, but I honor my father and you dishonor me. I am not seeking glory for myself, but there's one who seeks it, and he is the judge. Very truly, I tell you, or that verily, verily, show sure enough, show sure enough, I tell you, whoever obeys my word will never see death. Whoa. Whoever obeys my word will never see death. At this, they exclaim, now we know that you are demon possessed. Abraham died and so did the prophets. Yet you say that whoever obeys your word will never taste death. Are you greater than our father, Abraham? He died and so did the prophets. Who do you think you are? Hmm. Jesus replied, if I glorify myself, my glory means nothing. My father, whom you claim, as your God, is the one who glorifies me. Though you do not know him, I know him. Now, he's telling religious folk they don't know God. He, 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 he would be called tripping today. Yeah, Jesus is out there telling them they don't know God, but I do. If I said I did not, I would be a liar like you. <laughs> but I do know him and obey his word. 
your father Abraham rejoiced at the thought of seeing my day. He saw it and was glad. That's amazing. Abraham received a promise from the Lord. It was a conversation the Lord was counseling with himself. Should I reveal to Abraham the things that I'm going to do? He actually gave Abraham a revelation of the promise that he had. Look at the stars in the sky. Look at the sand on the sea. Ah, he gave him a promise and he was able to see the promise realized in the seed, which is Christ. But that, that we, we had to do another Bible study. He saw his day. You are not, but, but, but when he's telling them this, they're thinking, wait a minute, how you saw, how Abraham, how do you know Abraham? Uh, verse 57 says, you are not yet 50 years old. They said to him, and you say you have seen Abraham. Verse 58. Very truly, I tell you, Jesus answered before. This is, this, is, this is the crux of the whole issue. Before Abraham was, I am. Now, a lot of people kind of skip over that, which is why I'm so glad we have verse 59. Without verse 59, a lot of people, I, I don't know what he's saying there. Before Abraham was, I am. I believe it's the most um, explanatory ego. He, he's saying he's, I am. Even when you look at it in the Hebrew, he's declaring the same thing that Moses heard from the Lord in the burning bush scene. He's declaring he's Jehovah. He's declaring he's the great ever-present God. Why? Because at this, at him declaring that, they picked up stones to stone him. But Jesus hid himself, slipping away from the temple grounds. Today, I'm going to finish up today talking about the great I am. We have to first understand that when we're talking about this and, and all I give so much respect to all of those who are of other faiths. And the reason why is because um, I admire the tenacity of faithfulness. Because I believe that our jobs, the work that we're to do as followers of Jesus Christ is to point the faithfulness to him. People have faith in a whole lot of stuff. People worship a whole lot of things. Some people are so doggedly determined to worship something, whether that is a different religion or something outside of worldview in terms of religion, that they are so faithful. I've said this in a sermon before. One of the easiest evangelistic jobs I've ever done was with a young crip in Oklahoma who was sold out for crips. He was throwing up seeds, wearing blue, all that in prison. He was leading the whole thing. He was fighting and stabbing and doing stuff. And, and, and he believed that. His daddy was a crip. He was down from a crip neighborhood. He was cripped out. And when I started talking to him, I could see how strong his faith was in that. It was so easy to talk, so much easier to talk to him than it is to talk to a whole lot of religious people because he understood commitment already. It, it was wrapped up in his DNA. And so to change that commitment from a game to Christ, I saw an immediate change. He had a meeting with his gang and he said, I'm walking away. Why? This is why. Because the great I am showed up to him. Once he believed, he saw it. And so as we go forward over the next 12 minutes, I am praying in my heart that you would believe, be radical enough and have the audacity to believe, then see. Not see, then believe. But I'm going to try to make it reasonable for you. I'm going to do my best. So, so here we go. 
when Jesus stepped on the scene and had this conversation with the Jews, and there are many instances in this Bible where he was declaring things to the religious authority that they was trying to kill him after he finished talking. He, they didn't try to kill him when he was arguing about who Abraham is. They didn't try to kill him even when he called them the, the children of the devil. They didn't try to kill him with none of that. They, they, they tried to kill him when he declared, I am. Because that was blasphemy. And the sentence was death in the theocracy that they lived in. They lived in a theocracy. It was religious leadership. And so they were in charge. And so here, here is the problem. The problem that he was declaring was that I am who you've been reading about in the Torah, who you've been reading about in the history books, who you've been reading about in the poetry books. I, I'm the one who the prophets were talking about. He said that you've been reading the scriptures, but those scriptures are talking about me. That's what he told them. You could check it out. And so he was declaring that in their faces. And so when he said these four I am statements that I'm going to talk about now, the I am statements that we didn't discuss, when he talked about being the good shepherd, I am the good shepherd. I am the good shepherd. This is so interesting. We talked about him being the door to the shepherd. But the first thing he said is the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. I'm going I'm to be stretched out and I'm going to die so that I can bring many to me. In the same group of scriptures, he talks about having sheep that are not of this fold. I got sheep that's not Jewish. They're not the children of Israel. I, I'm going to gather them to me too. Thank you, Jesus. You had sheep that was living in Detroit on Linwood and the Boulevard that were not even to be born the 2000 plus years after you were uttering these words. And you're going to do something in a minute, laying down your life to bring that little chubby kid off of LaSalle and off Lothrop to you. That's crazy. And here's my point that I've been making in all of these studies. You have to choose to believe either or. Jesus can't be a wise man. He can't be a good prophet. He can't even be um, um, a good teacher. Either he was absolutely insane, crazy, out of his mind, or he was the Lord of glory. He was who he said he, he is, the great I am. It's no middle ground. The way he talked about himself, I am the resurrection and the life. Here's a situation where he's walking into a town, intentionally not coming to that town until Lazarus was dead. He goes to Lazarus' sister's house. He's in there talking to them. If you would have been here, my brother would not have died. If you was up in here, my brother wouldn't have died. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. Though somebody may die because of me, they live. What you see when you see a true follower of Jesus Christ is not a perfect person by any stretch of the imaginations. You see a resurrected person. Somebody who was dead in their trespasses and sin and somebody who's been resurrected by the life of Jesus Christ. That's all you see. What's the difference between that person the last time you saw him and this person now is new life came. They heard something. They believed something. They considered themselves to be dead. And then he raised them to new life. This is a miracle that you cannot explain. Jesus was talking to Nicodemus and they were having this conversation in, in, in John 3, in the gospel of John 3. And Nicodemus was talking to him and Jesus says, you must be born again. Nicodemus said, well, I got to crawl inside my mother and come on out again. He said, no, 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 no. There, 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 there's two verbs. One, by your mother, 
and then one by the spirit. And then he talked to talk to him again and he said, how do you not know these things? You are a pre, you are a leader, you are a nobleman. You sit on the boards of some of these religious authority and all them scriptures you done read that were pointing to me, the scriptures in Isaiah, the scriptures in Jeremiah, the scriptures in Ezekiel. How do you not know these things? But he didn't. He said that the, that the wind blows wherever it was. We don't know where it goes or where it comes from. He says, so is this everyone born of the spirit. I don't know what happened to me. I can't explain it. I can't tell you how it all happened, but I know that when I got up off that ground and I stood up straight and looked that man in the eye with tears in my eyes, I know that something happened in me. There was something else in me. I don't even have to explain it. I don't even need to explain it, but I met the great I am. There's some things that happen to you that, that, that you can't describe and articulate appropriately for people. They tell me, tell me what happened next. And you could give them the circumstances and then you could say, I don't know why I left that place that night. I don't know why I didn't get in the car. I don't know why, I but, but you know, something said, no, that radical rebirth, when you stand up straight afterwards, there's no lightning, there's no thunder, but everything has changed. He said, I am the way and the truth and the life. The way we, we've talked about these things. This is the one no people don't like. I'm the way. If you go into a church that declares that they followers of Jesus Christ and they tell you it's a whole lot of ways, then get out of there. I'm talking about today. Don't go back. Don't go back. Ain't no whole lot of ways. There's not. Either they receive something in their belly. Tell them where you get it from. When, when, show me your evidence. At some point, you got to start questioning people, too. I, I did. I, I did. I read all of the books, all of the knowledge book, all of the Jewish mysticism, Kabbalah. I read the Quran. I read everything. I asked a bunch of questions because if I was going to come out here and preach this word, I had to be sure. I had to have a rock solid foundation that nobody could shake because if somebody can talk you into something, then somebody can talk you out of it. So if you in a place that they're talking about, Jesus is declaring exclusivity. I am the way. I am the door of the sheep. There's no other way to get in except through me. And this is what people know. I want to get in my way. I want to be Lord of my life. And this is that kind of preaching that people are like, oh, no, this is, no, no, no. That nice preaching, stop the desperation prayers. That nice preaching got pandemics waging through. That nice preaching got people dying every day in our city. That nice, wonderful, yay, no, there has to be a way. Show me the way. I don't want to know how all the different paths. I want to know the way. How do I get there? I want to know the truth. I've been lying. I've lied before. I've stood in the spirit of a liar. I understand that. Where is truth? See, some people haven't been broken enough. The old folks used to sing, I'm sweetly broken. Ah, at the cross, you rescued me, you. All those songs like that. I used to be at church like, oh, my God, can I get out of here? Now when I hear them, I cry because I understand what it means to be sweetly broken. How can I discover or find or seek or knock on the door of truth? I want to know it. I want to know it. I'm tired of being alone, all one. I'm tired of doing everything by myself. I'm tired of this thing that I go to church. I, I go and I clap on Sunday. And, and Sunday evening, I'm already moving back into hellish conditions and things going on. And I don't have power to move it out of my way. I need truth. And I need life. Jesus said, I came so that you might have 
zoe, life, and have it more abundantly. That means he wants you to have life now. It was a trick on the plantation when they tried to make our ancestors, those of us who had plantation experience and ancestry, he tried to make them believe that you'll have a better life in the sweet by and by. It was a lie from the pit of hell. They were supposed to have Zoe right then and something within those very people who were being terrorized and raped and crushed had them singing about freedom, had them sneaking and stealing away and teaching each other how to read. They had them sneaking people from Georgia to Detroit and Ohio. Something in them wanted freedom and life. He couldn't take out that light that was in him, which was Christ. It was him. The more they suffered, the more they grew. How do you get doctors and engineers and teachers and postal workers? How do you get construction? How do you get all of these things out of people who were labeled among sheep, dog, and cattle? Because he is the resurrection and the life. How do you explain it? If your dopamine pincher, your pit bull, your poodle, in 20 years, start working at the bank, own a bank, go to law school. I'll stop talking about this word. They were labeled among sheep, dog, and cattle. And now we own Facebook Live and YouTube. He is the life. And lastly, he's the true vine. And I'm going to get out of here with this last one. He said that people that radically abide in him, <laughs> that's something there when you abide in him. He, he said that he's the true vine, that, 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 that the father is the fine dresser and those that abide in him, they will bear much fruit. He, here's the thing about fruit. Fruit is not to be consumed by itself. Fruit only grows to be consumed by others. So all of you who have received Christ, you need to be giving yourself away. Is anybody trying to take a bite out of you? Do, do, do people see your energy, your tenacity, your courage, your confidence, your kindness, your love, and they say, ah, I want some of that. Do you have any fruit? Jesus said, you're going to know them by their fruit. He, he said, so, so do you have any fruit? One way to say, oh, you say, I'm a Christian. And you're the meanest person on the block. Something, something, something ain't there. Well, your fruit. The only fruit that eats itself is rotten fruit. Yeah, yeah. If you put a, a, a banana right there, it'll start to turn on itself. An orange, turn on itself. Matter of fact, it'll develop little stuff inside of it. And let it start eating all the way. The, the rotten fruit eat itself. I'm just going to sit right up in here and I ain't going to be nice to nobody. <laughs> he said, if you in me, you're going to bear much fruit. That, that's just part of the deal. Now, 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 I have this last thing to say and we're going to come out of this Bible study. The best thing is that I am typically shows up when you're in the worst circumstances of your life. Because he shows his strength in your weakness. And so therefore, going back to Moses, where we started this whole study, Moses was on the backside of the mountain on the run for 40 years for killing some folks. He was scared to go back to Egypt because he thought the people in Egypt would tell on him, that they would snitch on him. He'd be taken before the courts and they'd kill him. God had to tell him that all your enemies down there, they dead. He, he didn't feel like much of a prophet. He didn't feel like a leader. He was a shepherd on the backside of the mountain and had been up there 40 years living outside of purpose. He thought that the Bible says he was raised in all the wisdom of the uh, Egyptians. And, and he thought he was living outside uh, of purpose while he was 
he was herding sheep and he was moving them around and he was protecting the sheep. He was in training for the destiny that God had on him. 40 years of work experience and moving and, and herding and protecting and leading and healing, binding up the broken, doing the things that he needed to do for these sheep because God had a greater assignment, an impossible assignment for him, but he had to train for it for 40 years. And in due season, God said it's time. But he was in the most broken place of his life. And I am showed up. Why is that critical? Because when you are in bad shape, you willing to listen. <laughs> when you ain't got nothing. When I'm on a floor and I ain't got nothing else, I'm willing to listen. That's when I am shows up. Psalms 910 says, when you know God's name, you trust him. If he's just nebulous God, God, are you there? God, when you know I am, when you know Jehovah, he's Jehovah Rapha. I'm sick. I'm in the hospital. These people are telling me that I had a heart, uh, I've had heart failure. I'm talking about me. They told me that. You have heart failure. Your heart is only working at 26%, 22%. It's going, it's going, and it's now Jehovah Rapha. I, no, listen, I'm not dying in this prison. Where did we get this kind of punkish Christianity from? I, I don't know. It ain't in this book. You better know who God is and know his name so you can call on him to show up. I am not my own. I'm not dying. You gave me a word, Lord. I told the doctors, the told that I'm getting up out of there, walk right up out of there in seven days. They told me you need a defibrillator. They gave me the defibrillator. I took the defibrillator off uh, and, and I'm not about to have that. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do that. You're going to die. I'm not dying in here. And I'm not telling you to be crazy, but I am telling you to be radically faithful. At some point, you're going to have to trust who you put your faith in. So the issue is the substance of your faith. I'm praying that you would understand that. I'm praying that you would know that this last thing that, that, that he said to us, I, I can't read that at the bottom, but I actually will say this, that in due season, that's why I print stuff out, because in due season, it's time for you to reap. How do you reap? You got to know his name. He is the great. I am. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for today. I thank you for the opportunity that you've given me to come before these people and talk with them about you. Dear Lord, now open the hearts of those who listen today. Pour out your spirit in a way that it will be undeniable. Set before them blessings and curses life and death, and then provoke them to choose life. That this is an opportunity that we all desire to meet you face to face, to have an engagement with you face to face. And Lord, I read in your word, that's exactly what you desire. You desire to have personal communication with us. You desire to be an ever-present you desire to be Lord of our lives. You said draw near to you and you would draw near to us. And so, Lord, I pray that you would release the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of who Jesus Christ is. That all of these here would come to know him intimately. And that they wouldn't have the world's peace, but the peace that only you could give. So that they could radically move in boldness, confidence, and courage in the calling that you have for their lives. We thank you, Lord, for doing it. We praise you in advance for making it happen. And we ask all of this in the name of the great I am, Jesus the Christ, the anointed one, the Mishnah, the Messiah. Amen.
Hey man, everybody, don't forget, hey, y'all like the YouTube page and share it. Somebody is going to get something out of this. I hope you enjoyed the Bible study today. I'll see y'all Tuesday at 7 p.m. Come on by Truth Topics Tuesday. Y'all have a wonderful weekend. Bless you. All right. Peace. <laughs>